Peace. How y'all doing? This is Zaza Ali. Today is Sunday, April 17th, and I am doing this video for a number of reasons. First of all, I pray that this message reaches you in the best of health, spirit, and mind. I am, um, let me preface what I'm going to say and let everyone know that I am fasting. I haven't eaten since Thursday and today's Sunday, so my mind is moving at a very quick pace. Um, so I'm going to strive to be as clear and concise as I can. Let me look at the camera. I'm looking at myself. Still getting the hang of this, but um, I'm going to strive to be as clear con as con as clear and concise as I can as I relay this message and um, be as forthright as I can, uh, you know, walking that fine line between being uh, passionate in what I'm trying to convey and expressing my disdain for um, the ignorance that is permeating this society, particularly women's minds, as well as, um, you know, um, doing it with, with a, uh, the right type of spirit and energy. Um, this is an Adinkra symbol, uh, the Adinkra symbol of love. So know and understand that everything that I say today is going to be said and expressed with the intention of love, even as, if it's a little hardcore, because some of what I have to say is hardcore, but this is a very um, trying time that we are living in and the subject matter is extremely urgent and important. Um, you may hear the music in the background, that's my Zen music, um, to help me to stay calm and, and um, in the right spirit. Um, like I said, I am fasting, so my uh, my energy and my mood can quick, quickly uh, turn and sway um, if I don't control it, and I'm definitely in control mode. Um, I know that there is going to be a number of different audiences that are going to listen to this video. Uh, one of them is going to be serious sisters who are really focused on edifying themselves and working to edify the minds of our daughters. I welcome you. Um, you are absolutely who I am striving to reach. I also know that there's going to be an audience of women who don't really want to hear any type of logic and reasoning, um, who are set in their ways as far as their perspectives and whose minds have totally been uh, shaped and molded in the image of the white man, <laughs> I'm just going to keep it a buck, um, you know, without even realizing it, you think you have your own mind, you think you have your own thoughts, you think you have your own perspectives, but you don't. You are regurgitating information that someone else has put into your mind. I welcome you as well. And um, hopefully you can take something constructive from this conversation uh, and, and give it back to our daughters, because that is my most important audience. Um, at this point, I'm willing to sacrifice a lot of, of this foolishness and a lot of these uh, grown-ups who have no clue and no concept about the reality that is facing young people today. Young Black youth, or young Black youth, young Black children, um, middle school age and high school age, are in serious, serious trouble. They are lost so for a subject matter like this to become so controversial and to see some of the foolishness that I see online, especially by women, especially by black women, um, I couldn't really sit still and, and not touch on, you know, uh, give my perspective and try to create a balanced conversation uh, along with Sister Erica Badu and some of the other sisters who I have seen who have made some excellent points and, and been balanced in their assessment. Um, I also know that there are going to be, you know, those who seem to gravitate towards my work um, and gravitate towards my video who come on my posts, you know, just to start trouble, coming amongst the righteous to start confusion. I don't welcome you. Um, however, I know you are consistently um, following everything that I do. Um, so, you know, go get some popcorn, get some Pepsi, because I know you probably eat like... <laughs> swine. Um, <laughs> I'm being funny y'all, but I'm serious too. Um, uh, and just, you know, maintain your, your civility in the comment section, because I don't want to derail the conversation that I want to have here, because this is extremely important. This is about young people. It's not about me. It's not about what you think about me. It's about our youth. 
So I welcome disagreeing opinions, but if you say something disrespectful, then your comments will be deleted. Um, so to start off, um, there's an Akan proverb um, that says that the undisciplined elder is reviled by children. The undisciplined elder is reviled by children. I can see clearly when I look at the mindset of a lot of our people, why our children hate us. Why they have no respect for us, why they don't listen to us, why they get off on making us fear them, why they are so out of control uh, on the outside because they are so out of control on the inside. And our behavior and our conversations and the work that we do and we, you know, we are so absent-minded when it comes to dealing with the reality of what they are facing. We talk about things the way we want them to be, opposed to talking about things the way that they actually are. And I believe if we understood the gravity of what young people are facing today, we will be a lot more astute in stopping talking so much. There's a whole lot of talking going on the internet and doing a little bit more listening. And it's funny because, you know, this whole backlash, you know, like, uh, you know, every, the conversation turned into dial talking about pedophiles and rapists, which we should be talking about that. But you weren't talking about that before Erica Badu made the comment. You're not in the streets working with girls who are being raped and 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 victims of pedophilia. And I, I'm saying that knowing that there are some people who are doing that. And to those of you who are kudos to you. Um, but you know, most of the people who are online talking really don't even care. They're just looking for a reason to jump on a bandwagon and be part of a popular conversation um, without really doing anything in real life because social media is not real life. Um, this is a, a, a fictitious world where a different plethora of different minds come together um, to share their experiences, to share their thoughts, to be people who they're not, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, I find it ironic. You know, there's a website called blackandmissing.org. Check that website out. Look at the statistics of young black boys and girls and black women that are going missing every year that are never being found again. The statistics of abortion, 370 some odd thousand abor black babies being aborted every year. And I would even go further to say that that number is much higher than that because Planned Parenthood is not consistent in keeping, uh, um, uh, accurate records. And of course, uh, with the situation that happened recently with them being expo exposed for um, reselling organ tissue and whatnot, you know those were black babies, most of them. So uh, um, sexually transmitted diseases, you know, there's a, a host of things. Sex, sex trafficking, young girls being trafficked and sold all across the country. And I'm not blaming any of these things just on girls and on females. I'm talking about talking about the real talk. What is actually happening right now? Because if we understand the war on young girls, then in our minds and in our hearts, we have to say, okay, we have to prepare these girls for this war. That's common sense. So, I don't even think Erica Badu was speaking from the perspective of the war. She was talking about human nature and how boys and girls are naturally attracted and how men are naturally attracted to young women because they are. And you're lying if you or you're not in tune with um, the news. You know, all of these different sexual uh, escapades that are happening between teachers and young people today. You hear about it every other day. This teacher has sex with this young boy. This teacher has sex with this young girl. I mean, these things are happening. And it's not uh, not always just pedophiles and rapists that these things are taking place. There's a lot of intricate layers that are involved in this. I'm not making excuses for a teacher who has sex with a young child. Absolutely not. You do that to my son, you're going to get hurt. He's 12. I'm not making any excuses. I'm talking about the reality of what young people are facing. And not just trying not to attract a male uh, teacher as a female, but just being respectful of yourself. Just understanding the value of your body. I am really curious to know how many of these pseudo-feminists slash emotional train wrecks and let me have driven past a high school or a middle school lately. Have you seen the way these young girls dress? 
Have you really driven past a high school lately, especially in urban communities, and seen the way the young girls dress? It is scary. And I'm going to show you some images of it just to kind of back my point up. But, you know, the the, the emotionalism that is relayed by a lot of women coming on posts and, and, and YouTube videos and just jumping in conversations and just being extremely emotional with no ra rationale, no logic, no proper understanding backed up by real-time information, just flying off at the chain. This is why men don't respect us. This is why they consider women as being emotional and, you know, catty and yeah, we are. But I do know and understand that emotion that is unmastered and that is uh, ruling a female can be extremely dangerous. I see a lot of that online to the point now where we can't even have a constructive conversation. The system made a specific point about a specific thing and y'all went left. This is why we don't get anything accomplished because we can't even sit down at a table and have a specific conversation about a specific subject without throwing the whole entire bank of problems that we have. She was responding to an article um, that was dealing with the skirt length of girls. And let me find it really quick uh, in high school. And she basically was in agreement with what the article said. Um, there was an article ruling that high school girls lower their skirts so male teachers are not distracted. She said, I agree because uh, we are sexual beings. We should consider everyone. Young girls are attracted. Some men are distracted. That is common sense. My son is 12 and I see the way these young girls dress. I see the way that they behave. They are off the hook. There are a lot of young girls out here who have absolutely no sense of self, who are so insecure, who have cute little shapes, and because they have no proper understanding, no proper guidance at home, they have no idea how to conduct themselves with the opposite sex. And I really wish when we have these conversations, we say, well, you know, it's up to the parents. It's all up to, it's all about parenting. Yeah, that's right. But if we had parents, if the, if, you know, these young girls came from families where parenting was, was being properly instituted, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. So we cannot sidestep the reality that a lot of our children are facing, which is they're growing up in dysfunctional households. They probably are a chip off the block, meaning that they are seeing behavior exhibited by their mothers, which is inappropriate. And so they are basically uh, reiterating that, that dysfunction. And then also we live in a society that is, that is permeated on sex, 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 sex. Keep you distracted and keep you submitting to your lower self or your lower chakra so that you will never understand and develop the real true power, which is in your mind. And it's funny because, well, I'm not going to go into that. Let me stay on track. So Erica Badu puts the Twitter up and all hell breaks loose. Okay. Uh, let me see a couple of the uh, comments that she made on her Twitter posts. She said, one way to protect youth is to remind them that we are all sexual in nature. And as they grow and develop, it is, na it is natural to attract men. It is not them who is doing anything wrong by being beautiful and attractive, but with such imbalance in our society. Imbalance in our society. It is smart to be aware and awake. Men and women go through cycles of arousal. Men automatically are attracted to women of childbearing age. Now, you know, people made some comments about what she said as far as older men being attracted to younger women. Let me just say this. Um, and I, I don't, you know, that is dealing with the, the, um, the undisciplined man, men who are, are undisciplined and who submit to their lower nature. Um, when I was in high school, I can remember when I would walk, you know, at lunchtime, there were men, grown men who were passing by the high school looking for young girls. It's just a fact. We could talk about, you know, why, you know, the, the dysfunction of the men, we could talk about you know, uh, if it's natural or if it's something that has been established based on the world that we live in, there's a lot of circumstances that, that, that have to do with that. But for the sake of time and in, in this conversation, 
It just is a reality. There are men who prey on young women. There are men who may have a natural uh, attraction to a young girl uh, just because she's beautiful. There's a lot of different circumstances, but we're talking about girls dressing in a way and behaving in a way to protect themselves. Okay, so she said, uh, um, I did that one. She said, morality is set up to protect our young, but when it fails and nature overrides, we must step in and use intelligence. This is Erica Badu talking about using intelligence. People who do not have the ability to discern conversation and real dialogue are not going to be able to understand this level of conversation. Some people, some grown-ups who have grown up and are living in adult bodies and are still children in the mind, are still operating on an elementary state of mind. Most, many, I, I don't even know if I can say many or most anymore. I mean, you know, 85% of the people on the planet are deaf, dumb, and blind. I actually think that number is a lot higher than that. But, um, you know, being able to use discernment and understand what, what it is that the sister is saying, she's not talking about uh, recusing or, or um, not dealing with pedophiles and rapists. She's talking about girls dressing in a certain type of way to be able to protect themselves, to be able to maintain dignity, and to be able to understand their, the power of their bodies and the power of an understanding of being sacred. Um, and, you know, when Aisha Curry um, put up a Twitter post, uh, let me see, let me get it here. Uh, she said, and I wrote a, 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 a blog about this on my Facebook page. Everybody's into barely wearing clothes these days, huh? Not my style. I like to keep the good stuff covered up for the one who matters. Uh, she said, just looking at the fashion trends, I'll take classy over trendy any, any day of the week. That's common sense. This is a woman who's married, who has children. And then people go back through all of her pictures and find pictures where she may have had on a short skirt or she may have had a, a kind of risque top on and they're like, well, what did it mean when she said, well, what is she saying now? And is there validity in the point that she's making? Are we paying attention to how women dress today? And what, how does that uh, lend to the disrespect of women? I'm not just talking about rape and you know, pedophilia and things like that. I'm talking about the way that men and women interact. I'm talking about thinking that you are going to um, garner respect from the opposite sex if you dress like a hoe. Yes, there is a attire, a, a dress code for hoes. Now drive past the, the strip in your in your city and then you'll see it. I know where it's at in Oakland, on International and in, in uh, High Street. And there's a couple of other places, a place in um, West. Anyway, I'm not going to tell y'all because some of y'all going to go looking for it. But um, whole, whores have a dress code. And I don't demean women who are prostitutes. And I don't demean women who are strippers. I want to pull women out of that. But I'm not going to talk to you and, and make it seem like I'm good with what you're doing. No. My goal is to raise you up out of that. Um but there's a dress code. So let's stop playing around and pretending like you can do whatever you want to and that there's not going to be repercussions of that. Like I said earlier, these girls and a lot of our women are off the hook. Everything is not men's fault. All of the problems in our community with our, with our daughters and our men are in our women is not men's fault. There's a lot of stuff problems that are happening in our community on both sides that are absolutely we can pinpoint to women in our behavior i'm going to show some some slides uh, some images in a minute of young girls who are in school who are who are sexually active in the schools and then you'll say, well, maybe she was molested at home. Maybe she was. Maybe somebody touched her in an appropriate way. Maybe she got raped. Maybe so. Maybe she's just sitting up on Facebook and Twitter all day and watching Real Housewives of Atlanta and scandal and seeing a certain image of black women that she's aspiring to. That's the thing that we're missing. Our daughters are searching for themselves and they're looking at the images that are being predicated 
uh, that are being um, emphasized in society and they're modeling that. And for us as women to ignore that and to try to act like that is not reality, shame on you. You should be ashamed of yourself. Baruti, uh, Mwali Muke Bamani Baruti in his book, uh, The African Male and the Homosexuality and the Feminization of the African Male, he has a quote. He says, um, if something is repeatedly shown over and over again, especially through the primary social socializing instrument through which we and our children are given truth, which is the television, then it becomes so in our minds. Instagram is reality to a lot of women now. Facebook is reality. YouTube is reality. Reality TV is reality. So there's a socialization process taking place now where you literally have women whose minds have been shaped and molded by the, the most wicked minds in this society. And then you come on Facebook and totally regurgitate what these people are telling you to think. Let me drink some water. Shout out to Aisha Curry. Shout out to Erica Badu. Um, it's funny how Erica Badu's personal life now always gets injected to the conversation when she tries to up the ante on the conversation, particularly by black men. And I like y'all disgust me. You really do. Because um, regardless to what she's done in her life and in her relationship, the children are here now. All of that is in the past. We talk about Maad and Africa and you know, what we were, these, these, uh, civilizations were governed by Ma'at. They were governed by systems that put children first. We don't put our children first anymore. We make a, every excuse to look out for them. Um, I'm going to show a short clip of window seat, the video at the end people had, you know, uh, and that's a response now Well, she was walking through Dallas naked, you know, when she did window seat and, um, you know, how is she going to try to tell somebody how to dress when she did a whole video while she was naked? Well, I don't know. I, I can't say that I necessarily agree with her for um, that, because I know if I had been in that in that um, area where she shot that video and my son was with me, I definitely would have been feeling some kind of way. I'm not going to front. But I do understand the artistic message that she was trying to make. And if you actually look at the video, not with your eyes, but with your third eye, and understand the message that she was trying to convey. It speaks right to what we're talking about right now. Group think. How everybody is on the same script. Everybody's saying the exact same thing. Nobody wants to go against the grain. Nobody wants to step outside of the box that has been created for us to speak real truth. So everybody's kind of saying and doing the same exact thing. So in the end of the video where she's naked, she's walking and then she ends up getting murdered. And she's murdered in the exact same spot where JFK was um was killed and then at the end she says a, a poem you can be able to look at it because you know there was a deeper message in what she was trying to convey anybody who has listened to erica badu's uh, uh songs over the past 10 15 years you know that this is a this is a sister who is not operating on the base level of the rest of these pop stars like she is totally in a class of her own she has dropped so many jewels that if you actually listen to her 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 message you can go and get the books and go and study certain symbolisms and concepts of African spirituality to raise your consciousness. She's been teaching us for years. So how dare we try to minimize her based on the fact that she has three children by three different men who all vouch for her and speak very highly of her. This is, this is a midwife. Like the respect that I have for her goes so much be so far beyond, um, this particular conversation, but I'm using this conversation to make a point. Um, so in the process of, you know, the backlash and everybody, you know, I did a, a, an interview with, um, Boyce Watkins recently, shout out to Boyce Watkins, peace King. And I'm so, uh, you know, I hate that the, the audio, uh, the video got messed up. So the, the video image of he and I speaking, uh, wasn't conveyed because we had a very balanced conversation, uh, me giving my perspectives and him coming back and giving his perspectives and asking me, I mean, it was a very balanced male, female energy. And we, we had a great conversation, but unfortunately, um, his audio didn't come across, so he only put part of my audio audio out, and I'm expecting him to put the rest up soon. But um, you know, uh, we did the interview, and he put part of the clips up, 
you can find that on his YouTube channel. And I'll also put the link on my YouTube channel here uh, when I put this video up. So um, the responses started coming in on my page as well as, as on his page. And I'm just going to read a couple of them that I found, you know, <laughs> the most interesting. Um, this is one. Ariel Clark says, people are way too ignorant. I'm not calling you out by showing your comment in my video. I'm showing people how our people think and the mindset of a lot of women um, who are among us today and how it is uh, regurgitating a lot of the problems that we have in our community. She said, people are way too ignorant. Do people not realize there's there's women that dress from head to toe that get raped and beaten by even their own husbands. Abuse doesn't have anything to equate with long skirts. She didn't say long skirts, first of all, but okay. If women who are lesbians can keep themselves stable around short skirts, then the problems aren't the skirts. It's the capability to have self-control. Anyone that rapes or assaults any woman needs to burn in hell. For the same guys singing this song in tune, don't expect for women to not say that you were shot or assaulted by a police officer because you were dressed or looked like a thug. First of all, what the hell does lesbianism have to do with this? Absolutely nothing. Um, no one said anything about making excuses for rapists. No one said anything about, like, you're taking the conversation way out of context and turning it into something else. Deal with the subject matter at hand. We're talking about young girls understanding the sacredness of their bodies. We're talking about them dressing in a way, in a way that will keep a certain level of distraction and attention off of them, period. If you have gripes about rape and all of these different things, which you should, I do. I talk about it all the time. It's in my book. You should have that, but stick to the subject at hand. You sound foolish and you look foolish when you do that, when you step into a conversation and totally derail the real topic at hand. Candace Hill said putting a bandage on a wound is ineffective to any societal problem. If every or hell the majority of young and older women were raped, molested, fondled, or by adult men were in a specific type of attire, then maybe we could respectfully say that it's a contributing factor and advise women as such to avoid harm. And this is my me grasping for straws with this notion. However, the attire of clothing of a girl or woman a woman wears has nothing to do with the mental illness and wanton ways of a rapist. Explain how Muslim women covered completely are still being accosted and raped at alarming numbers. Explain how elderly women are raped. I can go on and on with the in incidents that just blatantly show that isn't it isn't an isolated contributing factor to pedophilic behavior from adult men. Even suggesting this, Erica is bizarre. She strutted her new body in a public setting for children and whoever else to see. Had a man violated her, would he have been okay to do so? No. Then she went in um, to talk about her her experience being uh, molested, and I and I, you know, I don't play with that. That is a very serious conversation that definitely warrants our time and our attention, not just on Facebook blogs and on YouTube posts and on Twitter and on Twitter posts, but in real life. Like if you have a gripe with rape and pedophilia, then go out into the real world and do something about it. Become an, ad become an advocate. This is not the way, especially when you are totally off point and missing the point of what the sister was trying to say. Again, this is why our men don't respect us and don't like to listen to us because in situations where we need to use logic and rationale, we come with overly sensitive jargon and emotion that has absolutely nothing to do with the subject at hand nothing to do with the subject at hand uh people's minds are made up that it's somehow girls and women's fault that some pervs can't control themselves nobody said that nobody said that blame the victim never hold the men accountable sad sad faux tep world they live in and i'm sorry you went through what you did she's responding to the sister who was molested and of course you know uh, we don't condone that that behavior at all i'm from the mindset that those type of people should be dead period but that's another subject um fotep first of all this whole concept of of using a divine language uh comedic language which is 
and a, and a greeting, which is hotep. And turning it now into hotep hoes and hotep niggas and fotep and all of this stuff. Like, stop disrespecting our ancestors. That is very disrespectful. Stop doing that. Stop minimizing African culture and African sciences when you don't even know, really know what the word means. That's really what I wanted to stress about that. Nobody's uh, not holding men accountable. I, more than anybody, hold men accountable. And if you're familiar with my work, then you know that. If you're not, then please hold your tongue. And investigate what I do before you start popping off and, and saying that type of stuff without even knowing who I am. Uh, Mao Zedong said, no, no investigation, no right to speak. That goes to a lot of you emotional responders. Um, so slut shaming. Because this keeps coming up and everybody threw this in Erica Badu's face. What is a slut? A woman who has many sexual, excuse me, a woman who has many casual sexual partners. A woman with low standards of cleanliness. Are you are, like, is there really like a new conversation now where people are actually trying to defend the terminology slut, the behavior of a quote unquote slut? Any woman who identifies with the behavior of a slut? I don't do slut shaming. Like I don't talk down to people. I don't. I don't try to demean or disrespect people. I don't have to do that. I use truth. I'm gonna get, make it raw and uncut sometimes and be fiery. But I don't talk down to people. But the question is, should a person who identifies themselves as a slut feel ashamed? Should a woman who identifies herself as a slut and who embraces that and who promotes that on social media and on the internet? And in the media, should she feel ashamed? Hell yes. Where in the hell were the feminists at when she put this out? All of the sisters that are online talking about a woman's right to dress the way she wants and a woman's right to act the way she wants. Where were you at when she put this at? Where were you at when she put this out? What do you have to say about this? This behavior. This these type of women make it hard for women like me. We can't even go amongst our men and be respected for who we are, for our minds and our spirits, because we have women like this who are getting off on making men's nature rise. You think that's power? Being able to appeal to a man's sexual energy? That's not power. Some of the stuff I see some of you sisters, especially you sisters who claim to be in a conscious community. Who looked the part trying to keep our women confined by sexual prowess. You don't, there's, that's not power making a man have an orgasm. There's a science behind sex. And one day I'm going to do a, a, a video and, and I'll talk about this, about how our ancient civilizations and ancestors understood sexuality and how they understood the power of it and how, you know, constantly having sex and, 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 having your sexual fluid uh, ejected is taking away from the strength and the power of your mind. This is what we need to be teaching our children and having conversations about, not hemlines on skirts. So you see the video there. My question for the feminists, the black feminists and the women who want women to have the right to say and do what they want and look the way that they choose. What do you have to say about Nicki Minaj coming on stage in a dildo? What about Rihanna's video work? Love the song. I think it's dope. Every time I hear it, you know, it's, it's I, I really, I like the song. But when I saw the video, I was like, why, why, why would you do that? Now I know that, you know, the Caribbean um, culture, you know, is another conversation and I, I don't have time for, I'm, I'm not going to get into all of that, but um, this is what young girls are looking up to. This is what they think is womanhood. This is what they are aspiring to now. Uh, Black China, you know, strippers are popular now. Like, who the hell is Black China? Where the hell did she come from? Like, what, who, who, what is this image?
Should teenagers dress like this? Is that okay? Should women dress like this? And who's to say that some man is not sitting back and getting off on this, watching Facebook and Twitter feeds, and then turning around and going and raping another woman because he can't get to Black China or because he has no sexual control? I want to show a couple of uh, images just to back up my, my point here that I'm that I'm making. Um, black women around the world are are have are, are not respected, and it is my goal and it is my mission to take that back. We're taking our respect back, and that means we're gonna have to go to war mentally with some of our own women. I'm ready for that because I, I like I'm just disgusted by a lot of the foolishness that I see uh, on behalf of a lot of women. And, and totally uh, inept to the condition of our daughters. I, I'm going after our daughters. So if that means me having to sacrifice a Nicki Minaj or a Beyonce or a Rihanna or any of these other females who are teaching girls a lesson about using sex to get what you want, so be it. I will sacrifice all of their asses to save a generation of young black girls. Believe that. And I say that with all due respect. I love those sisters. They are worthy of respect, but they have to carry themselves in a way uh, that commands respect. And if you don't, then there is a repercussion for that. That's not giving men a green light to disrespect them. It's taking responsibility and accountability for yourself. When do we get to a point as women where we stop doing that? So I just wanted to show, you know, it's, 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 uh, uh, let me do the sex in schools first. And this is something happened recently in Oakland where um, a young girl was caught in a gym giving oral sex to a young boy. He was suspended. They were both expelled, excuse me. Um, so these are just a couple of articles and this is everywhere now. Um, allegations of preschool oral sex shocks parents. Preschool. Let me see. Uh, the claim filed by attorney Greg Owen on behalf of one child alleges four and five year olds at the first Lutheran, Lutheran <laughs> child development center in Carson, California, were performing oral sex on each other at the preschool. The suit alleges that in addition to acts performed on the five year old plaintiff, other students were removing their clothing and engaging in sexual acts on the playground and during nap time. I mean, I'm a mother. And that doesn't mean, you know, okay, yes, there may be some sort of uh, illicit behavior taking place in the household. Yeah, they may, you know, be turning t the TV at night while their parents are sleeping and, and stumbling on porn. I mean, there's so many different factors. We live in a society that is that is obsessed with sex. Stop acting like it's not the case. Stop jumping on and downing people who are trying to prepare young girls for this actual fact. It is an actual fact. I, you know, I, I get frustrated when I'm saying this because I really feel like it shouldn't even, this is common sense for me. Shelby County, Tennessee. Um, the Shelby County Sheriff's Office is investigating allegations of sexual misconduct at Bolton High School. Students say a ninth grade girl was selling sex in the school bathroom for weeks. The district confirmed six students were suspended for varying reasons as a result of the investigation. One child was being paid to perform oral sex. She was told by her daughter who attends uh, Bolton High and mentioned that there are many positive things happening. Okay. However, the school currently has allegations of prostitution echoing in the hallways. Ninth grade. You don't think we should be having a conversation about how girls dress, how they act, how they carry themselves, the value of their bodies, not their freedom to dress the way they want to dress, the value of their bodies. Look at these images. This is just, there, there's thousands of these on the internet. I just pulled up a few of them.
black teenagers at their proms. Now you could you could minimize this and say this is you know these are some ghetto ratchet you know whatever. I don't care. Like I'm not one of those people who have thrown and dismissed our people away because they you know live in poverty or because they're ignorant. No, I, I don't do that. Look at the way our daughters are dressing. They look like the celebrities on the red carpet. This is how they dress. <laughs> look at this. This is. What does this young sister know about life? What does she know about her womb? Her body? The type of image that she's projecting. She doesn't know anything because all she sees is celebrities on TV. And clearly she doesn't have a strong representation of what a woman is in the household. So we're not even going to minimize the conversation and say, well, that's on her mother. No, she's our daughter. Look at these young sisters. This breaks my heart. What do you have to offer the world besides the size of your back, your butt, and your breast size, and how pretty you are? This is the question that we need to be asking ourselves and asking our daughters, not sitting on Twitter and sitting online screaming and hollering about a damn Twitter post that was really made out of good intentions. Look at these young sisters. This is scary. You think this is not impacting the way that boys interact with girls? That the way that our men interact with us as women? If you do, you're, you're a fool. You're really a fool. Um... You know, I, I can't stress enough um, how important this conversation is and how how um, how perverted sex has become and how weak we are as a people when it comes to having real intelligent dialogue about things that are taking place in our community. How blatantly disrespected our daughters are. Twerking videos all over the place. YouTube, you know, young girls. Putting up these videos, looking for attention, looking for affection, looking for money, looking for hope, looking for anything besides the reality that they have in their own lives. How dare we as women? get on the internet and minimize this situation. Talking about slut shaming, talking about a woman's right to wear what she wants to wear, stop. Let's deal with the reality of what we are dealing with on the ground, the reality of the situation that our children are facing. Can we talk about that for a minute, please? Let me make sure I, I have everything that I, that I wanted to talk about. Um, we need to understand the difference between what a lot of men want and what men actually respect. Ain't no real man checking for this foolishness. You online talking about all this, you know, blah, 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 blah. Ain't no real man checking for no woman like that. And then you turn around and say, it ain't no real man out there. No, you've just lost the ability to attract that man when you opened your mouth. Boys are getting raped too by women. Boys are getting raped and are getting perverted by women as well in the black community right now. Where are you at on that? What you got to say about that? All of our problems are intertwined.
It's all relative. So don't talk about one thing and then leave the fullness of the conversation off the table. There is a serious uh, plague of insecurity and arrogance that is permeating the, lot, lot, the minds of a lot of women, particularly black women who have nice figures and who are beautiful and who go on Instagram and put up all these pictures and the, the videos, the Y'all need to stop. You looking for something that you're not going to find online. You are looking for something that you are not going to find online. The vanity. Oh my God. Why don't you speak on that? Black feminists speak on that. Speak on vanity in women right now. Speak on how we only think that all we have is our bodies. I said, um, when I wrote the post about, um, Slut shaming. A lot of black women are afraid to be anything more than their bodies. And a lot of that has to do with our men, you know, because they only see us based on the size of our butts and the size of our breasts and, you know, our sexual attraction. You got these peons now using sacred geometry as a as a as a reasoning for, you know, the makeup of the woman's body. And, you know, yeah, it is sacred geometry, but it has nothing to do with you. It's about her ability to produce life. How do we create sexually disciplined boys and men in this type of climate? Do we, should we even be thinking about that? Is that even our priority? What, do we, what is women our responsibility? To create sexually disciplined boys and men. Do we even think like that? Do we even, can we even conceive of having a conversation with a man and a boy with the intention of helping them to understand the disciplinary aspects of sex. How do you carry yourself as a young girl with if if that's your agenda or is your or or your mother implanting that agenda? How do we create a civilization of sexually disciplined boys and men? And how is it that we as women can complain about rape and pedophilia and then totally neglect that idea? That's insanity. And the thing that pisses me off the most is that I know a lot of you women have sons. You aren't even preparing your daughters to be able to interact with our sons. And my son's going to run up on that one day. These little hot, fast little girls. He's a girl magnet. Oh, I can't stand it. Are you preparing your daughters to be able to properly interact with a boy? Are you teaching them about the way that they dress so that if they do come in contact with a boy, he's not thinking about what's beneath her skirt. He's thinking about what's in her head and in her heart. Do you know how to do that as a woman? No, you don't. Because if you did, you would understand that your responsibility is not only to protect women and protect their right to, right to dress the way that they wanted to dress, but your, your duty and responsibility is also to our sons, whether you have a son or not. How are you going to call yourself the mother of civilization and then totally ostracize and abandon our other, our other half, our men? That's why I laugh when people call me a feminist. She's a black feminist and try to write me off. I have a son. I can never only be a proponent for women. And even if I didn't have a son, I loved my father. I could never only be a proponent for women. I know that we can't heal as a people until our men heal. And this culture of rape and pedophilia and misogyny and um the, the womanizing and the playboys and the mac daddies and the pimps and all of this foolishness. When we as women understand how badly and how systematically black men have been destroyed. They've been destroyed. When you understand that, when you study and you know that, it changes your perspective. That don't mean I'm going to, you know, submit to no foolishness. That don't mean that I'm going to excuse, you know, insanity. No, call it out. Call a spade a spade. But understand where that came from. God didn't make niggas. 
the white man made niggas. Believe that. If we're going to cultivate a new generation of boys and sons to fix the problem, not just talk about the problem, but fix the problem, we have to start thinking as women like mothers and not just individuals. There's a, too much individualism right now. I want to wear what I want to wear. All right, well, wear what you want to wear, but what's your, what's your message to the young sisters in the high school? And then if you teach them the science of themselves and how their behavior affects other people, then you have to check yourself because you got to practice what you preach. And I, I implore everyone to, um, to watch Lupe Fiasco's video, Bitch Bad. Because it, there is a very, very powerful message in this video. And I would even go a step further and say, get a group of young teenagers, middle school, teenagers, whatever. Sit down and watch this video and break it apart. Piece it apart line by line. Look at the video images. Convey the message that he is trying to send to our people, to our young people. Let them convey it to you because they probably be able to see more than you do. Because they live in it. We just sitting back and talking about it on Twitter and on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, for the girls who, who the young girls and even the women who, who watch this and who listen to this. When you understand the power of the, of the female body, when you understand that every time you give birth and even before you give birth, that you have been divinely ordained to create life with your body. When you understand that you have trillions of cells moving through your body at any given moment. When you understand that your hair follicles on the top of your head are coiled in a certain way as antennas to help you to be in touch with the cosmology of the universe. When you understand that the power of your body is not only in your curves and the size of your behind and the size of your breasts, but in the fact that you can actually not only give life but sustain life. How sacred your womb is. How sacred your body is. That it is a temple. You don't let any fool, anybody, even, even a good man should have to work to be able to penetrate your body. Your second womb. This is your first womb. He should have to get in here before he can get down there. Make him stand, make him aspire to a certain standard that will separate you from the rest of these women. Because it's cool to be a hoe today. It's fly to be a stripper now. It's fly to be a reality TV star and to dress half naked. Be different. Be better. Do something that separates you from everybody else. These women are not role models for what you should be. They are role models for what you should not be. Carry yourself with dignity and with class. The term goddess and queen and mother and womanhood, you have to earn that. Dr. Francis Cress Wilson said, we have to earn the respect of our men. So we need to start carrying ourselves in a way that will earn their respect. That doesn't excuse all of the foolishness and all of the savagery. That's just a different conversation. Carry yourself with dignity. Carry yourself with respect. And when a real woman like Erica Badu or some of the sisters that are in your community talk, listen. Save yourself some heartache and pain. I wish I had sisters when I was 15 and 16 years old and a mother that could give me the, guide, the guidance and the tools to be able to sidestep a lot of the foolishness. It would have saved me a lot of heartache and pain. Slow down. And just be a young girl. Be a young woman and find yourself first because you're never going to find yourself in a man. I'm going to leave you with um, Bitch Bad by Lupe Fiasco. Um, I'm at 56 minutes now. I know the video is probably going to be about an hour and 10 minutes when I'm done. But I thank you for your time and your attention for, for riding with me um, and for uh, hopefully um, understanding my intention and the message that I strive to convey. My website is www.zazaali.com. You can purchase my books there. Uh, you can see different interviews as well as read my blogs. Um, I'm on Facebook at Zaza Ali. That's my most prominent 
social media connect, if you will. Um, Z-A-Z-A-A-L-I. Um, I'm on Twitter. Let me see what's my Twitter handle. I so am not uh, good at this stuff, social media. Let's see. Shout out to Boyce Watkins if I didn't say that. Uh, Zaza Ali underscore seven, I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, and I'm on Instagram, Zaza underscore Ali 78. So hit me up. All right. Uh, yeah, that's it. Peace and love, family.